Hey everybody, so we're here. Happy Friday. We made it. It's the weekend. Oh my gosh, it's been a long week. My daughter's birthday was on Wednesday and I tell you what, like his birthdays now are a lot more than what it was when I was a kid. <laughs> There's like family party, kids party, goodie bags for school. Like I don't, I don't understand. Like I don't remember this happening when I was a kid, but it's been a little, a little tiring week, but we're here um, for the weekend. We're going to sew up a drawstring bag together. And I didn't think to grab the one that I already had made up, um, but we'll go ahead and we'll do two tonight because they're actually really, really quick. So the sizes that you have cut, you're going to need an exterior and lining fabric and it, the pattern, I think it has 12 inches wide by 14 inch high for your fabric. And then you're going to need fusible woven midway interfacing like Pellon Shape Flex 101. So I'd say, hi, Courtney. Hi, Alex. Um, I've got my fabrics ready to go. Um, but I wanted to talk real quick too about a couple other options for this bag. Because if you use a different kind of fabric, you could actually use it for like a pool bag, even like a lunch bag kind of thing because it'll make it waterproof. Um, so a couple options that you have is use your regular cotton for the exterior. And I'll flip this camera around when I start sewing too. Um, but you can use something called, it's P-U-L. I don't know if you actually say it P-U-L. I say pool fabric. I don't know if that's correct. But if you see this stuff, it's usually in like the craft store, um, with like the baby, like the cloth diapering stuff. So, um, hi Karen. So it's got one side that's like, if you can even see, it's kind of like plasticky. The other side's like a woven. And if you put this plasticky stuff, like right side of your fabric, when you make it, it'll make that waterproof. So you can stick in like towels in the pool or like bathing suits or whatever. The other option, is it pool, Mary? Am I saying it right? Or is it P-U-L? Like, I don't know if you walk into a store and you ask, like, where's your P-U-L fabric or your pool fabric? You say pool, too. Like, right. I don't know. But it's P-U-L, pool. It's, it's, it stands for something like poly. I don't know. I don't know. But it's in, like, the baby section at the craft store. And it's pretty cheap. And you get a lot of it. And it comes in some different colors, too. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Mary. Hi, Linda. Um, the other option, which is what I call for me to the garden flags is a waterproof canvas. Um, you spell it out P U L. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing. I just always called it pool. Um, but the waterproof canvas is another option that you can use too. Um, if you use the waterproof canvas, I would not interface it at all. It actually is kind of non fraying, um, which makes it nice. You may just be able to kind of pull like just an exterior out instead of having to line it. Um, and it's a nice option too with that. Um, hi, Susan. Use it for dog pads, Mary. Okay, yeah, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty versatile, like, especially if you ever want to make, like, um, just a wet bag or a lunch bag or whatever else. These are all really good options. And I'm kind of rushed because I have to show you this. This fabric got to my house literally at 6.42 p.m., and when I saw it, I had to use it for tonight because look at this. How fun is this? Because I got this rainbow cording today, too, so... I absolutely had to use this. So here I am at like six, I don't know, 6.45 down here, cutting fabric randomly, trying to interface it because it was so cool and I really wanted to use it. So I know one side I have probably isn't a straight, but it's going to work. So go ahead and make sure you have all your fabrics together. You have them interfaced. You'll need cording or you could use double fold, double fold bias tape too. If you have that, if you do use bias tape, just make sure you run like a a row of stitching in the center so it doesn't open up on you but you can totally use that too i like cording because it's, it's cheap it's easy it's right there so i don't have to worry about sewing anything else oh and you know what i forgot to sew i forgot to cut tabs for this too so i'll have to go to that at some point in time um so to get this started um you're gonna have what's gonna be your casing panels um so actually i'm gonna need the rainbow one first because it's fun and then I'll just go grab some cork and cut it. It'll be fine. Um, so with this, you're going to grab what your casing fabrics are going to be. Um, you could use this out of the exterior of the lining fabric. It doesn't matter if you wanted to have like a pop of color and like change it up. So there's some kind of like contrast in the exterior. It doesn't matter. Um, this is cut. If you want to change up the size of the bag, 
all you have to do is add inches around and your casing will just be cut one inch shorter than the width of your bag. So this one, I actually think I cut this a little bigger. I want to say I cut it like 16 by 14. So it's 14 inches wide um, as opposed to what the pattern says. Um, so I wanted a little bigger because it was fun. And this is cut at 13 inches. So you can see it's a little bit shorter and it's going to become even shorter when I fold it under. So first step of the pattern. Um, Amy, you're here for a live. Yay. Um, so I'm going to turn this now so you can see what I'm doing. Um, let me turn this, not make everyone seasick here. Maybe. Oh, there we go. All right, here. So I have this felt pat mat, so I'm not ironing directly on my table. So don't panic about that. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take what your casing is and you are going to just take that and fold one of the short sides under by about a half inch like this. And then you're just going to press that down. And if I don't burn myself being so close to like an iron hanging out over there, it will be a miracle. All right, do the same thing with the other side of it. You're just going to fold it under about a half an inch. Just that way you get a nice fold right there. And there you are. That's what it looks like on this side, what it looks like on this side. And I didn't even, I was so excited for this fabric, I didn't even like one new bobbin so we're going pink for everything i'm just going to run um a quick row of stitches if i have it in the pattern or not you really don't have to i'm going to run a quick row of stitches just right here right along this top edge you have the i love this little mini iron it's great especially if you're trying to get in there and iron bags um once you're done it's a great little it's a great little tool all right so i'm going to go ahead and just run a line of stitching down i said this is kind of optional you don't have to do this part but I'm going to run it right down there on the short edges, just about a quarter inch away, about a quarter inch seam allowance. All right. And where are my snips? There they are. All right. Clean this up. Yeah, Debbie, this is already interfaced and ready to go. So I'm going to get the other side real quick. Like I said, this little stitching down the ends is optional. You really don't have to do this. I just like to do it because I don't know. I am the way I am. So this is one of our casings now. So once you have that, the next step is you're gonna just fold this in half with the wrong sides together like this. Okay, so you're gonna end up and just run your iron, give it a quick press to create a crease right here in the center. Look, my iron like cords long enough here. Yeah, we'll be fine. All right, so now my casing is like this. So it's just folded in half. Okay. Oh, I am wearing pants. Yeah, they're like a lavender. That would be, that would be awkward. No, I, I'm not that scattered. Like some days I don't know, but I am totally wearing pants, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other casing. I'm just gonna fold down one of those short edges towards the wrong side, about a half an inch. And press that down. Do the same thing with the other short edge, just about a half an inch, fold that under. And at some point I'm gonna have to go over and grab like tabs that I didn't cut out or anything. I'll grab some vinyl, I'll grab some black cork because that'll be really quick. I don't have to worry about interfacing it. Okay, so here's where I'm at now. If you can see both edges folded under. The gauntlet for sharing secrets. <laughs> We're all friends here, right? It doesn't matter. It's all good. All right, so I'm gonna fold those long edges together now, wrong sides together. All 
All right. And I wish I would look at the pattern. I don't know if I tell you actually. I think I tell you to sew it down at the edge versus doing it all at the next step. So we'll do that real quick. So once you've got it like this, you're just going to sew down this raw edge right here about a quarter an inch, eighth of inch, quarter inch. It's just a basting stitch to get it down and kind of keep it together. I think I'm like so close here. I keep hitting the pedal really fast and keep scaring myself. You would think after all these years that I'd have a better feel for it, but no, I always scare myself when I get started. Casing looks like this and I've got you can even see on camera where I even so I don't think you can but just a quarter inch right there along that long raw edge there do the same thing on this side just going to sew down this raw edge here and we're just basting this together it's called a basting stitch it's just to help keep it in place before we go to the next step so you can do an eighth of an inch quarter inch away from the raw edge we are here's our casing all together now what we're gonna do um, is we are gonna find the center of this and to do that I'm just gonna fold it in half match up my short edges here and kind of just finger push it together you can even use like a like a marking pen or something if you want to but I just like to fold it and then it creates you can see in the dark fabric a nice little crease right there that I can use so I'm gonna grab my exterior I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to fold it in half vertically. Yes, vertically. Um, so I can find the center of the top edge. So same thing. And I'm just going to finger press that real well. And if you can even, I don't know if you can even see on camera, but there's like a little, no, you really can't tell, but I promise it creates like a little fold. Um, that way you can kind of see where the center is. Hi, Piera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my casing and that center mark of the casing along that raw edge there. Um, I'm going to place that right over the center mark of my exterior. And I'm black. I probably should have marked it, but it's fine. Here we are. All right. I want to clip that along the top edge. Uh, your casing is two and a half inches wide, but then you fold it. And so when you fold it, it makes it like an a inch and a quarter. Like when I started, it was a lot wider. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Debbie. All right. So I'm just clipping across that top edge. Again, I match the center point of the casing and the center point of the exterior panel. So here's where we are. Right, so our raw edge is up here at the top. So our folded edge is down here below. It looks wider. Now it'll be, um, no, it should be. So it'll end up being the, the width of the casing will be an inch shorter than your exterior panel. And then when you fold it under, like you did with this, it's gonna end up being a little bit shorter because of the folded edges. All right, so now that I've got this, I am gonna go ahead and stitch right across that top edge there. This big old like felt pad here, I guess we can go away. All right, so I'm just gonna stitch across the casing there. Make sure that when you start, you always back stitch the beginning and end of your line of stitching. And I guess, you know what, I could use the proper seam allowance here. I started doing it um, quarter inch, but it's fine. I just snapped my thread too. Yeah, I did. I was so excited for my new fabric that I got. I didn't even look at the instructions. Now I'm kind of going by memory here. Let 
and just re-thread my needle, which is always fun. Especially, it's like so dark in my basement too. Did I get it? I didn't get it. So one thing I miss about my domestic is like the automatic threader. This extra thread here, we'll get that out of the way. All right, starting over again. You can just do this in a quarter inch seam allowance too. It doesn't really matter now that I'm thinking about it. I think I had a quarter inch in the pattern because you're going to end up taking that in later when you add the lining to it. So it'll be fine. All right. Oh, it's back here finally. <laughs> wish I had a drink. I don't have a drink. I have like crystal light over there, my mug. Um, so here's where we're at now. It's folded down here. Um, and what I need to do is I need to go cut some tabs real quick because I forgot to do that. So the tabs, do not remember what I said to put them in the sewing pattern, but I'm going to use them with, um, I'm going to grab some cork so I don't have to fold it under. So I'm going to cut that at two and a half by two. And I'm going to cut cork. I'll be right back. Got some black cork I can pop on there. One second, because my life is chaos. All right. And I hear Gus running around upstairs like a maniac, so that's fun. Here we are. Okay. I had to go cut some tabs real quick because I forgot to do that. So the way I'm not like getting to that part yet. So here is one part of our exterior. You can see back here. I'm going to go ahead and sew up the other part of the exterior. To repeat the same steps that I just did. I'm going to fold my casing. Ugh, loose threads. I'm going to fold my casing in half to find that center. I really want to make sure I squeeze it down there. If you have to, you can mark it just to find that center there along that raw edge at the bottom. The back, um, this, no, actually someone, this clip, someone made this for me in like a swap years ago and I love it. She made like a little set for me. I think a basket over there. I have this one right here. I'm kind of obsessed with them but it was sewn, it's quilted. All right, so we've got this folded in half, center marked. I'm gonna do the same thing along the top edge here. Fold that vertically. I'm gonna get it straight just to get my top edge, get that center marked there. And again, you can't really see it on camera because it's dark fabric and I just folded it, but there is a little center fold right there mark and I'm going to match up that fold along with the fold of my casing and I'm going to have the raw edges against the raw top edge of the bag so I can even see in the camera there we are and I'm going to grab my clips clip that in place All right, so here is where I'm at now. My casing is clipped down to the top of my bag. And I'm gonna run the same step just to stitch along that top edge of the bag.
make sure that I reinforce there at the start and stops. I just ripped my thread again. Because why not? All right, so now we have two exterior panels. And now the next step, once we're with my shoes, we're going to add the tabs on. So let me re-thread this for the 75th time. Here's where we are. We are gonna go ahead and add our tabs. So normally these tabs would be fabric, whatever. And I wanna say it's like two inches wide by two and a half inches long. I forgot to cut them completely. So I just went and grabbed cork real quick cause I don't have to interface it. And it's okay if it has raw edges. So I cut the cork pieces to two and a half by one inch. So one inch wide. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this in half, okay like this. Um, normally I would go through and what, what you would do with the fabric is you would fold it in half. If I can grab a piece, I'll show you in the other casing. You, where's my other bag? Here it is. So normally when you make, pretend this is the tab, okay, sorry. What you would do um, normally to make the tab for it, it's like how you would make straps if you're familiar with that. You're just going to fold this in half this way. So I've got it. I create a center fold there. See the center crease there? And then I'm going to, we're going to pretend this is a tab for now. I'll fix it there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your long raw edges and you're going to fold that right into your crease and you're going to press that down and you're going to run along the whole thing. Y'all knew I couldn't just without messing it up, right? You knew it was going to happen. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to fold now the other edge. Apparently I wasn't paying attention and my other edge is a little short here, but I'm going to fold that right into the center fold again on the other side. And I'm going to press that down in place. All right, so that's normally what, pretend this is short and this is your tab, it would look like this. So it's folded into each other. You are gonna have raw, ed raw edges visible, but it's gonna be okay because you're gonna flip it when you sew the tab. It's gonna get, you're gonna sew down one side, down the other, and then it's gonna get folded in half. So pretend this is much shorter. It's gonna get folded in half, and then you're just gonna sew along the bottom. Pretend this other piece isn't here at all. It's just one little short tab. You don't really don't see this, right? Um, cause like I said, I couldn't do something without messing something up. So we have our tabs that these are magically sewn now, right? You guys can totally see that I sewed these and didn't cut these from cork. So with these, just go ahead and fold them in half, make your life easier. And I want you to stitch along that bottom edge again, using a really small seam allowance, quarter inch, eighth of an inch, whatever just to kind of hold that to make the tab part. And that is gonna be what's gonna hold your cording in. All right, so this is a tab, we'll pretend it's fabric. Um, but this is our tab, so the cording will actually end up going in there. Um, but what we're gonna do is, we are going to do it to the other side, same thing. Go ahead and fold that in half. Why can't I follow my own directions and just cut things out properly? I got so excited by rainbow fabric that I forgot everything. I'm easily distracted. All right. Two tabs. All right, so next step. Go ahead and grab your exterior panel. And I need to grab a ruler. All right, here's my exterior panel. Right, 
and we're gonna make a mark. You can see, can you see maybe? I'm trying to like turn this so y'all can see. We're gonna make a mark that is one inch up from the top of the fabric, okay? So we would normally take and just make a mark if you can see bottoms here an inch up, make a mark on either side, or if you wanna be a cheater like me, just grab your tap with the raw edge, touching the raw edge of your exterior. Go ahead and pin, pin or clip that in place. Okay, so that's one inch up and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So one inch up from the bottom. Go ahead and take your tab. The raw edge of the tab will be matching the raw edge of the bag and it's just right here at the bottom. Just go ahead, clip that in place. And we're gonna run a line of stitching over that just to secure that down. And we're about to be done with the exterior. Oh, my safety gun, we need that in a minute. All right, so I'm just gonna base that down. It's a small seam allowance. One tab in place. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're just gonna run a line of stitching right there along that edge. Just secure that down. Here is where we are. You can see, so this is our exterior. We've got our tab sewn on the bottom. It just gets us sewn on one side for now. So it's just grab whatever side you want to be your front and just slap them on there. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and grab our other exterior piece with the casing on it. And we're gonna clip these wrong sides together or right sides together, I'm sorry. Don't do that. Wrong side to do bad. Right sides together. So our wrong side is out. So the fabric gets pretty side together. And we're going to go ahead and clip along the side and bottom edges. I've shifted here a little bit. Easier when I'm standing up, but I don't want to stand up and stick my butt in your face trying to lean over this, so we're kind of going with it. I kind of cut them wonky because I was so excited and trying to rush and get it done really fast. So, all right, here is our exterior panel. So these are all pinned together. So they're right sides together. So your wrong sides out and you're going to start um, at your top right edge. And this time you're going to start with a three eighth of an inch seam allowance. So find your three eighth seam allowance. And you're going to start at that top right edge and you're going to sew all the way around. So go ahead and get that started. I'm sure that you back stitch. my end, my corner here, I'm going to check and see if I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put my needle in the fabric so it's like all the way in there and I'm going to pivot this 
to make sure that I'm at three eighths of an inch. I am. If not, go ahead and spin it back around and just run another stitch by hand. Um, turn your hand wheel just to get that going, but I'm already there, so I'm good. So from here, I am just going to continue on across the bottom. I'm not quite there at three eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna use my hand wheel. Go ahead and just run one more stitch and then I'm gonna check and now I am there. So from here, just go ahead and turn all the way down and stitch on this other side. I'm at. So here is our exterior. Um, from here, what I like to do, grab my shears um, just to save some time in the next step. I'm going to go ahead and just trim down the seam allowance here. So I like to cut it down to about a quarter inch or so, but I'm not going to trim around where the straps, the, um, the tabs are at the bottom because I want to reinforce that stitching. So I'm just going to start at one edge and then I'm just going to trim away the excess fabric here at the seams. This is just an optional thing. I just think it gives it a better finish, but I mean, if you're not comfortable doing it, that's totally fine too. So I'm gonna keep st stitching. When I get down to where the tabs are, I'm just gonna kind of avoid those because I wanna keep that extra reinforcing stitching there. I don't wanna cut into it when we stitched it earlier. And go ahead and stitch along the bottom or cut across the bottom, whether we're not stitching, we're cutting. Long week, I tell you. All right, that out of the way. So same thing on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut up a little bit. I don't wanna cut into the where the tab is, so I'm gonna avoid that. And then just continue on. I can't even cut straight on fabric. Destroying my life here. Okay, so here's where we are. So we've trimmed away kind of the excess, if you can see, um, along the edge there. That way it's just gonna be neater when we get to it and we turn it all out and it's all finished. So the next step, it's the really easy part, is just sewing the lining together. So with the lining, you are gonna go ahead and match those right sides together. Yeah, there we go. All right. I like this to start at one side along the top. And kind of go down, put a clip across my bottom corner, turn it, do the same thing. Try and get all the sides matched up. And then you can kind of add more clips in between just so you're not getting stuff totally shifted as you're clipping. So here I am. I'm gonna go back where I was. I'm gonna add a few more clips in there just so it's supported. You can't really over clip, so add as many clips as you, you want to add. You can add pins too, but I just find myself using clips all the time because they're easier. I always stab myself with pins too. Many, many, many times. Like when I started sewing years ago, like the clips like weren't I think they weren't like out in the market as much or something because they like they weren't a thing. And I remember like trying to like pin these things and then we were doing binder clips and it was it was terrible. There's all kinds of cool stuff now, but I don't remember when I first started. I'm aging myself here. All right, so here's where we're at. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start at that top right. And this time we're gonna leave a hole at the bottom. We're gonna leave a part of the bottom that's gonna be unstitched. Um, it'll probably be like from here to here along the bottom, um, just so we can get that turned. So 
reminding myself of that now so that I don't forget and stitch right over it because I'm known for doing that too. Mm, Gus is barking it upstairs. All right, so again, this is my three of an inch seam allowance. And with this too, like if you are more comfortable using a different seam allowance, it's totally fine. Uh, if you like using a half an inch seam allowance, that's fine too. Just, just do it consistently um, on when you assemble the exterior and the lining, like whatever your preferred seam allowance is. I always, I'm partial to three eighths of an inch because on my domestic, that's the width of my presser foot. So it's a lot of presser foot, so it's just what I got used to, but some people like a half inch, so that's totally fine too. It'll just be a little bit smaller of a bag. All right, so I'm gonna see where I'm at. Not quite to my three eighths yet, so I'm gonna pop in another stitch and check. And now we're good. All right, so cross my bottom here, and I'm gonna stop a few inches in, and I'm gonna back stitch. So that's really well reinforced there where my turning hole is going to be. All right, so here's where we're at so far. If you can see my stitching's here and here. I stopped. I'm going to leave a big gap along the bottom. I'm like, this is backwards. So I'm going to I'm going to pick up about here. We'll say here so we got more room. We're going to start sewing again. That way we leave a nice big hole that we can turn our bag through. There's not an exact thing here. Um, bigger is easier, so you're not really gonna make it too big as long as you've sewn in it a couple inches on your bottom, it's totally fine. All right, so again, I'm gonna make sure that I backstitch. I really wanna secure that seam right there so that way it doesn't pop out on us when we go to turn the bag. together now. I'll trim all these threads up. Got lots of long threads. Go ahead and trim around my turning hole threads here. All right. So here's where we are. So we sewed along I'm like backwards because the camera, I got it reversed. So we started here. We sewed all the way down. So to a few inches into the center, we stopped, we secured that stitching, we skipped this area at the bottom, picked up here, and then went up all the way back around, okay? So from here again, I'm gonna go ahead and trim, but I'm not gonna trim around that turning hole that's unsewn, because that'll make it easier for us later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim out close to my seam allowance. Again, this is optional, you don't have to do this. It just gives you a little bit of a nice cleaner finish, but it's not gonna mess up your construction of the bag. It's all gonna go together for you, even if you don't trim. So come in here and I am skipping that area, the turning hole. I'm like throwing my scraps on the ground, it's fine. I'm like the world's messiest like maker. Like some people have like their nice little thread catcher and all that. And I just, I'm not that person. I'm like, I'll clean it up later. And I do, but not before I make a huge mess. All right, so here is where we're at now. So that's our lining. I'm like, backwards. We have a nice hole right here. And I didn't, if you can see, I did not cut oh, backwards. I did not cut along where that opening was. I didn't trim there. So from here, go ahead and grab your exterior. Go ahead and turn this right side out now. All right, so 
from here, go ahead and slide this inside of your lining. So don't be afraid to smush it in there. I'm not gonna hurt anything. Smush it in there. So now it's inside. So our lining was wrong side out and our exterior was right side out. So now we put them together like this, the right sides are together. So I'm gonna start at the side seam just so it's nice and even. Grab the, make sure that you're matching up. You can see the side seam of your lining and the side seam here in your exterior and go ahead and start there, clip that, and then go to your other side seam and do the same thing. Just grab your side seams there, match those up. Let's see what I'm doing here. There it is. All right, side seam. And now I'm gonna go in and clip all the center. And I'm so excited and for, I didn't forget and sew through my turning hole. I've done that. I think the last time I did a sewing, like a sew along, I did it probably twice. So today I just forgot the tabs. And I think the hardest part of making this bag for me was figuring out how the drawstring goes in because that like was mental math. Like I couldn't figure out how to, I couldn't figure out how to put it together. And then once it did, I'm like, oh, duh. It, it, it took a little bit. All right, so here's where we are. We're all clipped together along the top edge there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and sew this. Um, so go ahead and just open your bag up a little bit and just stick it under your presser foot, just one side of it. That's how we start here. Um, and again, this is gonna be the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, or if you wanna use a half inch, that's fine too. Go ahead and start, make sure that you back stitch. And you are just gonna go, and as you go, if you can see, I'm gonna kinda rotate my bag as I go. Like, I don't know why everyone's yelling upstairs. I don't know what's happening. All right, so just going, and I'm just rotating it and trying it as I'm going. Whenever you have to stop switch your bag, just don't forget to keep your needle in the fabric. That way it doesn't shift your line of stitching. Grace, Gus tried to earlier and I, it was, it was kind of frightening. I was going to leave him down here. Um, and then he kept coming over and I have this iron over here and I was afraid that he would just knock it over like mid video. Like that's not going to be good. So he got sent back upstairs. back to the beginning make sure that you back stitch too just to secure that seam all right we're almost done just trim my threads up here gosh to make an appearance I, I was gonna leave him down but I'm like now I'm afraid like he's gonna end up stepping on the presser <laughs> it's sewing through my finger Okay, so here's where we are. So like all of our seams earlier, we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to trim right around there at the top. So it's the same thing, just to keep some of your bulk out a little bit. So go ahead and just trim. You're gonna be trimming through your casing too, and that's fine. Like the, not, not through your casing, but you're trimming through the, the top raw edge of your casing. Please don't trim to the casing on the right side. That'd be bad and you'd be mad at me. So we're just trimming through all the layers on the top there, about a quarter inch or so away from the seam, not through your casing. You would all be very mad. Again, going around. Be 
this is optional. If you don't want to trim around, it's not a big deal. It's not going to affect your construction at all. Um, it just makes it lay a little bit nicer once it's all flipped right side out. All right, so we're in the home stretch. So from here, we're just gonna go ahead, remember our turning hole? We're gonna go ahead and just pull everything, the exterior through that turning hole. And if you made it too small, it's not really a huge deal. Um, you can either go back and cut a little more of your seam ripper just to kind of open that, that line of stitching up or just go slow and just kind of work it little by little. It's all fine. All right, so I'm flipping this. Bring it side out. I like to, while I'm here on my bottom, go ahead and just push out those corners really well. Um, you can use a tool if you want, but with this, it's, since it's just one layer, um, it's just fabric and interfacing, you should be fine with your finger. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and we need to close that turning hole. So you're gonna get your iron. And what you're going to do, since you left that area that was longer, it's going to be easy just to tuck that in in there. It kind of naturally just goes in there um, so that your raw edges get stuck. If you can even see, they're in there. Um, but the excess we left there makes this part really easy. So just lay that down on your ironing board and just give it a quick press. I kind of like to do both sides just to make sure it's all even. So from here, go ahead and just pin or clip that, that, just that hole right there. And then we are gonna stitch just real close, quarter inch, eighth of an inch away from that, just so our turning hole closed. I like to use a longer, a longer system for this, but it's up to you. And you could use matching thread, which would look a lot nicer than this, but can least see it with the with the pink here all right and so that is you can see where our turning hole was so from here all we have to do now is push our lining back into our exterior and then we need to add our cording which i think is the most complicated it's the most it's not complicated but it's complicated for me to figure out i'll say that all right go ahead and shove my lining in there and this will this casing will stick stick up much nicer. If you want to, you could run some top stitching along under the casing there, like at the very top of the bag, not the casing. Um, but I found like when I gave it a good press, which I can't really hear because my ironing has the nice little area that I can stick the, the top in. Um, you don't really need it too much, so that is up to you. All right, so now I have my cording, and I went ahead and started with a. Uh, two two yard lengths so go ahead and grab your cording or your bias tape whatever you're going to use for that um did i lose my safety pin that i put out of the way so i wouldn't lose of course i did let me grab another one all right and they make these like really like drawstring turning tools um but I don't have one. So a safety pin works. So when you're doing this, go ahead and just stick your safety pin through the cording. Don't stick it at the very, very top or what's gonna happen is it's just gonna pull through. So kind of get it down maybe a quarter inch or so. So you've got a good hold on it. And get it in the center so it doesn't pull through on you. And then you can start over. All right, so from here, I'm gonna start, doesn't matter which side. Um, I'll start here on the right side with the front casing. 
and I'm just gonna push the safety pin through. You kind of have to squeeze the fabric and then kind of pull and push the safety pin through. It's closed obviously, but, and you just work it through this way. Or you could spend $4 and get a fancy drawstring turning tool. That's fine too. I actually ordered one, but it's not here yet. So we're making do. It can only take a minute to do it this way. It would be annoying if you're like doing production sewing and trying to make a bunch of them. But safety pin totally works. All right, so we made it through one half. All right, so from here, we're gonna now come, if you can see, to this other piece here. So same side, um, we're gonna go in. We came out this side of the casing, so we started here. We started here, went through. Now I'm gonna go right around to the back. So on the, the casing on the back of the exterior. And the same thing, I'm gonna pull this through. This trick works too with the, um, this is, yeah, this is paracord. Um, this works too, like if uh, you lose like strings out of your hoodie and like pajama pants and stuff like I always do, um, you need to get them back through. It works well. Just a safety pin and some patience. All right, so now we've got one half of the cording in. So here's where we are. So again, we start it, we start it here in the front, okay? We ran all the way down this way and then ran it around into the back and the casing so it's out on this side. And now we're gonna do the exact opposite um, with our other half of our cording. So the other piece of cording here um, I actually got mine on Amazon. If you just look up um, paracord or cording, like you can find it. This rainbow stuff I found on Amazon, I can link to it um, when I'm done tonight with this. I bought a huge, um, a huge pack of cording. It was like, I don't know, more yards than running my life. And it was like, I don't know, 20 bucks, I think for like, for like 24 colors or something. It was a big pack. So it was not expensive. All right. So now I've got my safety pin attached to my other piece of cording. Um, and I am going to start now on the opposite side. So we're doing the opposite of what we just did. So go ahead and start in the front on the other half that does not have the cording hanging out. And this part is a, goes a little bit slower only because you have the cording already in there. So it doesn't go in quite as smoothly, but it only takes an extra little bit of effort. I'm just lazy, I guess. All right, so we have through one half there. So from here, we're just going to run now this into the back part there. So just turn your bag around. Nope, my safety pin was coming out. So I'm going to slide that back in there. All right. So I'm going to run this through other half. And like y'all, it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to figure out how to get this to actually be draw, like a drawstring and not just cords hanging off. Um, honestly, Debbie, I'm not even sure like what thickness I grabbed. Um, it, I, it doesn't really matter. Honestly, like if you're getting paracord, I, I know there's different ones, but they would all pretty much work unless there's some like super thick paracord they don't know about. All right. So from here, look at this. This is the cool part. It's a drawstring. All right. So from here, we just need to run our cording through the tabs we made there on the bottom. And 
my cording kind of got frayed there. Just trim that down. It's fine. We're going to we're going to melt the ends of it here. But just so we can get it through easier. All right. So run one half of your cording through one of your tabs on the same side. So the excess that's on the side that has like the excess here, run it through that same tab. Don't make it across your bag. Um, just run one part through and then just tie a quick knot. Try and even this up a little bit. And you can add a couple knots too. I think in my daughter's bag, I kind of knotted it twice, um, but just to make sure, but it holds pretty securely. So here's where we're at. I got one knot here at the bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. Just one, trim up this little bit of ick. Run it through your tab there. And then just give it, make it a little knot. They also have um, sliders. I don't know what they're called. Recording stops, I think. I think I have one over here. I haven't used them. But that is an option too. Um, I, don't even, I have so much junk, I don't even know where I put it. I'm not terrible. I think I'm a hoarder. Um, no, I don't even know where I put them. But they do make these little stop things if you want it to be like fancier that you could just run them through um, versus making a knot. I can link this too from Jamaica. Yeah, it's kind of bright and colorful. All right, so from here, what you're gonna do is if you're using paracord or cording, um, especially with this nylon stuff, the paracord, um, you are gonna want to heat up those ends um, to stop them from, because they'll continue to fray. So I know that I grabbed a liner right here somewhere. Here it is. All right, so I like to just hit them really quick at the end um, with a lighter. I promise I won't let anything on fire with this. Oh God. Gross. Is the slider still work? Yeah. Okay. So I just hit it really quick just to kind of melt the ends. That way it's going to stop fraying on you. I don't have to hit it very long either. It melts pretty quickly. And there's where we are. So it melted down. I'll see if I can do this one closer on camera so you can see. All right. A science project. All right, see how frayed that is right there? I'll hit this really quick with a lighter and look how quickly that melts down. You can also, if you don't want to use a lighter or don't have a lighter, you can also use like a fray check or some glue just to secure it too, but I find this to be the easy part. Just to grab a lighter and hit it real quick. And that's it. That's our bag. So we made it. So here, and if you want it to, like, you could add pockets on the inside, too. Um, I just want to make it really easy. This, I have another one I was going to sew up. How long have we been doing this for, like, an hour? Then? Maybe I won't, though. Um, but this is this is actually a little bit bigger than, by two inches, I think, than the one that I, the pattern. So I want it a little bigger. But the smaller one, if you can just imagine, it's just about two inches shorter and two inches um, more narrow. It's perfect for, like, a 6 by 10 or 5 by 7 design on it. So, like I said, the nice thing is that the drawstring, so, and it's a backpack. Um, if you didn't add the tabs on it, you could even do a smaller version of this. Um, like I said, the only, the only math you need to know for this is when you make a case, when you make the casing, make the casing one inch shorter than the width of the bag that you're making. So say you wanted to make a 10 inch wide bag, right? Or an eight inch wide bag. Cut your casing to be seven inches and follow the same steps and it's gonna work out the same. So you could make a really small one, a really big one. The height and the width don't really matter, um, but just that casing will need to be a half inch shorter than the width of the main panel and the lining panel. So that's it. Um, I did do, I can just show you the panel that I did so you can see the six by 10. I think it was taking this long. It took me longer than I thought because I kept messing up, I guess. Um, but this panel here, um, this is a six by 10 on this bag. So, and it's pretty big on the bag that's from the pattern. So five by seven is perfect for this too. Um, and 
I think that's all I have. I'll fill it up and I'll show you guys later, but um, I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat. That's it. So I hope this made sense. Any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, I'll pop in and I'll pop in the link to the cording that I got. I said it was pretty inexpensive on Amazon. This is also, and you can make these longer or shorter. This is, um, this is four yards worth of cording. I'm off camera, I'm backwards. And this is plenty for a backpack um, for, I don't know, for a kid, teenager, like, you know, a smaller adult. If you wanted to make them longer, um, you can totally make them longer too. So it's totally up to you. I would just start at least with the, um, the you're gonna do two yards for each each side. So you go from there. All right, everyone have a great weekend. Um, I'll be out and about a lot this weekend, so I'm not sure how much I'll be able to kind of pop in the group or answer emails, but I'll try. Um, but I'll be around for the rest of the night. So if there's any questions on this, just pop it in and I'll answer them. All right, have a fun weekend. Bye.